Welcome to my lecture online. Another diagram, the PT diagram, is much easier to understand than the previous diagram that we saw and still very, very useful to us in order to be able to understand how substances react when they are subjected to different temperatures and different pressures. So PT, of course, stands for pressure and temperature. So let's look at the diagram on the left. There's some key points to see. We have what we call the critical point. And so when the temperature goes beyond the temperature at the critical point, then the substance will become a gas. To the left of the critical point, the substance can be a liquid, a vapor, or potential also a solid, and we'll see that in just a moment. And of course, the farther you go to the left, the lower the temperature, the more likely the substance will become a solid. We have also what we call the triple point. At that particular temperature, pressure, and specific volume conditions, but we're going to ignore the volume. In this case, at that particular temperature and pressure, the substance can be in all three phases at the same time. Solid, liquid, and vapor can exist simultaneously at that particular temperature and pressure. That's what we mean by the triple point. In order to understand the PT diagram better, let's move along the diagram along isotherms where the temperature doesn't change. So at very low temperatures, because temperature increases to the right and decreases to the left, at very low temperatures, notice at very low pressure and temperature, a substance will be in the vapor state. And then as we increase the pressure, the vapor will be get compressed and be turned into a solid. That will happen uh, with more and more pressure being required as the temperature increases, because as the temperature increases, there's more agitation, there's more kinetic energy, and it will require more pressure to take the vapor and compress it down into a solid state. Once you reach the triple point right here, the temperature that coincides with a triple point, we're still talking about relatively low temperatures for most substances, then you can see that as you compress, as the pressure increases and you compress the vapor, the vapor will first turn into a liquid, and then if you continue to increase the pressure and increase the pressure, eventually that liquid will then turn into a solid, will cross what we call the solid to liquid boundary. And here, of course, we have the liquid to vapor boundary, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. So notice as we go further to the right, as the temperature continues to increase, again, as you apply more and more pressure, but then it will require additional pressure, eventually the vapor will again turn into liquid. And that's, of course, along this what we call liquid vapor boundary. And it gets to the point here that if the liquid, uh, if the temperature is high enough, no amount of pressure will eventually turn into a solid. The liquid simply will turn into a gas, and you'll have to be at tremendous pressures right here before the gas will eventually turn into a solid. Again, to the right, as the temperature is sufficiently high, we'll be in the vapor state here, but eventually at high enough temperatures, the vapor will simply turn into a, a gas condition. As you go to the right of the critical point temperature, then everything will be a gas because the temperature is simply too high. Now we drew another diagram to the right because that's the PT diagram for water. It turns out water has a very interesting behavior that's different from all other substances. Notice that this solid to liquid boundary has a slope to the right, basically has a positive slope. And if you take a look at it over here, this line has a negative slope. The liquid to solid boundary has a different slope for water as it does for other substances basically all other substances in the universe. So what's the significance of that? Well, let's take a look. Let's take this isotherm right here. Let's say that we are at a very low pressure at a reasonable temperature. We'll have water in a vapor state. And then as the pressure increases, notice we'll go from a vapor directly into a solid. As the pressure increases sufficiently, if the temperature is below the temperature associated with the triple point temperature. And then if we continue to press and press and press and, and continue to increase the pressure on the solid, eventually we can take the solid and turn it into a liquid. In other words, if enough pressure is applied to solid water, basically ice, then the ice will actually turn back into a liquid, which is very interesting. Part of the reason why ice skaters can skate on the ice is because their very thin blades apply very high pressure to the solid ice underneath, will turn that solid ice into water over which the ice skate can then glide. Of course, they also shape the ice skate in such a way that it has very sharp edges to increase that ability. But notice how different it is. Here, we can go from a vapor, 
apply enough pressure, it will turn into a liquid, then apply enough pressure, it will turn into a solid. But that cannot happen here. If we apply enough pressure to a vapor, it will turn into a liquid, and then applying additional pressure will never turn into a solid, will continue to be a liquid. Only if you're far enough to the left here, you can see, if you're to the left of the triple point temperature, you can then go ahead and notice that if the vapor is compressed into a solid as increased pressure, eventually additional pressure will indeed turn that back into a liquid. Quite interesting. So it does tell you a lot about the relationship between solid, vapor, and liquid when you look at the PT diagram. And again, move along isotherms to see what happens when the pressure changes or move along constant pressure isobaric lines, for example, to see what happens when the temperature changes. You have a solid here, and if you continue to increase the temperature, eventually the solid will turn into liquid. If you increase the temperature, the liquid will eventually turn into either a vapor or a gas, depending upon how much pressure is applied and whether or not you're to the right or to the left of the critical point. Here you can see, of course, if you're to the left of the critical point, you go from a solid to liquid to a vapor. If enough temperature is applied, then eventually you go to a gas. But when you're up here, and you increase the pressure, notice you go from a solid into a liquid, and then eventually, if you cross the temperature required past the critical point, then it will go again into a gaseous state, because at that temperature, a liquid definitely will turn it into a gas, and rather than a vapor. In conclusion, the PT diagram, very useful, move along the isotherms, move along the isobaric lines, and you get a lot of feel for how things change in a substance for different temperatures and different pressures. And that's what the diagrams are for.